Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of our live market analysis ASX. We're going to do ASX stocks and ETFs, all you can eat, or at least for an hour. Pretty simple format today. You ask the questions. I give you my best technical and fundamental analysis where possible. Uh, pretty, as uh, if you're on the streaming services, I can see your uh, your questions coming in. So uh, hop to it. Zoom tends to be the most reliable way to get them. So uh, pardon me if I don't get to yours for a minute or two. Let us head over to the Amy Broker first up. And I have uh, questions coming in. First in today was, uh, well done, William, MMA Offshore, uh, which is clearly not that one because it's MRM is the ticket code. Nearly got me there. Um, looks very good. I think last time we looked at it, William, we said it looks very good and nothing's changed. It, it just looks amazing. And this just goes to show that it is, I think it is, let's call it inferior logic. That's the way I'm going to put it. Inferior logic to think that when something goes up like that, um, it automatically must be too expensive. And if I wheel back to when that occurred, uh, you, you would have to admit that even the most ardent trend follower, that's what I am, would say, wow, you know, that's that's had a great run. It's had a great run. Uh, uh, then someone who's not me might then think, uh, maybe I should sell it. Um, well, actually, I don't mind because it hit a dollar and we do have a rule that when it hits big round numbers like that, we can trim some, we can trim some, but there's there's absolutely nothing in that candle to suggest that we should have sold our full position because I think you would be um, not giving yourself the greatest opportunity to make a decent profit out of this one. Um, it, I'm guessing it was a, a profit upgrade or something similar that caused that. There was definitely some fundamental news in the market to cause that push up. And what studies show, and these are US studies, go Google them. Okay, I know this famous line is that what studies show, blah, 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 right? Go, go Google them. It is, it is true, is that uh, when you have an earning surprise to the upside, and the price pops like this, it gaps up. What you tend to find more often than not is that when you look three, six months down the track, the price tends to be higher after that. So that initial response is the right way. It's not as accurate for the other one uh, where we gap down, but there is still definitely uh, a trend there in the data to suggest that when we have the big gaps down, it's not necessarily a time to buy. You know, you, you're, you're better off actually just exiting that trade and going looking for something else, if anything, looking for something that has gapped up on its on its earnings or its good fundamental news. So no surprises here, William, that this one's done so well. Very quickly, what's, what's the first place I start when I do my analysis? I look at my long-term trend, Big tick on that one. Happy, happy, happy. Short-term trend, big tick on that one. Um, are they uh, getting stronger or are they getting weaker? I can only see them getting stronger. Then I go to my price action, which is my peaks and troughs. And it's hard to draw on this one. In fact, I don't think I'm going to because it is a very illiquid stock. Illiquid means there's not a lot of shares uh, changing hands on any day. That doesn't mean that we should necessarily buy illiquid stocks. Sometimes they're the best ones. There's uh, you know, whatever demand is in the system is just not meeting any supply. Why is there no supply? Why is it illiquid on the supply side? Because it's a great stock and nobody wants to sell a great stock. And this is a picture of exactly that thinking that there is a great stock here and the shareholders just don't want to sell it. So the money that is trying to get into it has to um, bid higher and higher prices to entice out the, uh, what did I call it? Uh, uh, inferior logic that, oh, it's too high. I have to get out. I need to sell. I need to supply. Um, it's very sketchy on the price action, but again, not, not a bad thing here. That's why I have uh, both of these systems in place, the trends and the price action, because sometimes one will work better than the other. Final thing I look at is the candles, and I can't fault the candles. There are there's plenty of white ones in there, plenty of lower shadows. It indicates uh, a really strong demand side market. Do I need to sell this one? No, I can't see anything in the chart that is suggesting to me we need to sell this one. Should I buy it here? I have no objections to you adding some risk here. It is getting a little bit of a ways away from my light green zone. You know where I like to buy them, where they pull back to the light green zone with some nice candles. So that's where I would say, look, air straight out, add some risk, no problems. It's had a little bit of a run from there. So maybe it does a little bit of a pullback and does that. That that would be the only thing that would cause me to counsel against jumping straight in here. 100% a hold, maybe a buy, um, but a very, very great, uh, very good case study to kick us off. 
I think when you look at a chart like that, you, you automatically assume, well, that stock, whatever it is, must have the best fundamentals. Well, let us check out the valuation. We're not going to go into the nitty gritty of all of the fundamentals in terms of what the company does. Oh, look, I, I know they have a bunch of ships that they uh, hire out to uh, energy companies to do their, their exploration, among other you know, marine related activities. The, the big problem we might have here is coverage. So we're looking at our Refinitive Icon tool, which is a, a product supplied by Thomson Reuters. Thomson Reuters, we know, is one of the biggest financial data aggregators in the world. And the Icon tool goes and surveys a bunch of different brokers. Now, in this case, just the one. And we get from the broker what their price target is, which it happens to be 144, allowing nearly 30% of upside from the current price. And this is where that uh, faulty logic comes in. You look at a chart, you go, oh, that's too high that's expensive right we go back we look at a chart and we say ah, ah, that's expensive isn't it that default thinking of something that's gone up too much that's expensive can't buy that it is faulty faulty logic when it comes to your investing but it's so common isn't it because there are investors out there doing the actual work what work did you do oh that's expensive bang that's your work these guys will break the company down, you know, uh, ship by ship, dollar by dollar, and with their expertise, come up with a valuation. And they're not looking at that chart at when it hit uh, 88 cents or whatever it was and saying that's expensive. They're going, well, it's still, you know, 40, 50% undervalued. Okay, so detune your brain from looking at a chart or something that's gone up too much and saying that's expensive. It's not necessarily the case. Why? Because you don't know everything, smarty pants. Okay, what do we have here? One strong buy. Uh, let's look at the EPS line next. Do we do we have some nice growth in earnings? Well, we have, we've had negative earnings, but the, that negative um, earnings is getting smaller and smaller until the point where FY23, we're going to make our maiden profit here. That's usually a good time to get on board stocks with rapidly growing earnings into the future. And I, it looks to be the case. You know, we've got some really nice earnings growth here. Um, I don't know enough about the company to say high, low, modest risk. I think with a company that's so focused on resources, I think you've got to go at least moderate. Uh, in terms of what PE, well, we don't have a lot of choice here, do we? Because it's just the one broker, but um, any reason not to pay 23 times for a company that's growing its earnings at 30% per annum? I don't think so. I, I think it looks very cheap to me. I can't see any reason why. And again, I'm not going to say, well, it's it's un half. It's only half of what it should be, but I can't see any reason to doubt the broker based upon what I'm seeing there. So chart looks great. Valuation seems to check out. Brokers seem to like it. What more do you want? I guess. What we're trying to do here in our live market analysis sessions is bring together the fundamentals and the technicals to give you or provide you with better investing information. Let's go to King for the next one. And King, I will go to streams next. Uh, King has asked for SIQ, uh, which looks pretty decent. Yeah, King's saying he's actually, he's bought some and he's saying there's a point of supply at seven bucks. So King actually... Talking my language, King, starting to use some of the lingo. Let us uh, identify that $7 point of supply that King's talking about. I think, it, I think it might be, yeah, look, it's around there, isn't it? It might be a little bit higher than seven, to be fair. But you can see where the supply was coming in in the past. And our theory is that there's every chance that it could come back in in the future. It's not guaranteed. I can't see any reason why you shouldn't just hang on to this one, King. Um, I can see where you got in, but I won't tell everybody else. And I can see what you're looking at because um, King, no doubt, looking at the short-term trend changing. He's after one of my turnaround plays here. Well done. Uh, bumping into the zone. Uh, I think maybe you're a bit premature on that one, but I can see the white candle that you were looking at. Um, and then if you waited, it was kind of too almost, I shouldn't say too late here, but that's where the confirmation came, isn't it? And you would have given up a fair bit. So I can see roughly where you got in. I think, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with some of your thinking uh, if I'm reading your mind there. Uh, but long story short, I can't see any reason why you would sell it. I don't think these candles are so sinister to warrant um, taking any profit at this stage. Uh, there's a little black one there and today's upper shadows, not fantastic, but you know, we're still holding above the low of that demand candle. If we started to, to encroach into it, I'd be a little bit more concerned, but we just have to see uh, how the candles play out from here. I wish I could give you uh, more accurate information. For example, hey, King, this is exactly what you can do, what you should do, because I know exactly where the share price is going to be uh, in 10 days' time. I don't, 
So I can't give you that. All I can do is say, based upon the supply and demand I can see in the system, I think we're fine. So happy holder here, King. Um, if you're not in it, do you need to buy it here? I don't think so because it's it's still a ways away from my short-term trend zone. We might even see something like this and we don't have to, but often when things pop, they come back a little bit. They pull back. People go, oh, it's gone up too much. I need to sell. You know, They give it a couple of days before they decide to do it because people have been suffering on this one for so long. If you don't believe me when I say people have been suffering on this one for so long, look at the chart. So there are a few nervous Nellies out there that was, oh, it's, it's gone up. You know, they, held, they waited for three days and that's it. It'll never go up again. And they'll start to supply in the market. Okay. And we know that the money that's coming in, we can see the money's coming in. But, you know, they, they don't, they don't really want to chase the stock. They'd rather precipitate some supply. They might even sell a few, get some supply out, um, have some profit taking, and then they will look to come in on that pullback uh, wherever that might be. And, you know, it's, we tend to find that the light green zones, I'll change that color, the light green zone is where those pullbacks uh, tend to terminate in an uptrend, and we see a move into there. And, you know, this is at the start of the presentation where I like to draw my demand side buddies. So, King, if you see... Uh, this is for King because he might want to add to the position. That's another option is adding to the position or other people who are thinking maybe they might want to buy it somewhere down the track. If you see this candle here, and uh, we'll only do it once today, there's our demand side buddies. If you see them in that green box, that's where you'd be looking to buy. Until then, happy holder. Uh, let us uh, quickly flick over here. Uh, let me check that I'm not missing any um, cries for... Uh, technical difficulties and go into here and we will go for SIQ and see what we can get. Eight estimates, so a bit of broker coverage here. The highest target price, 769, lowest 590. Oh, well, that's a pretty um, tight range there. Mean 665, which does allow for some upside from here, even you know, despite that recent rally. Three strong buys, one buy, four holds. A little bit polarizing, but at least there are no sells or strong sells. I think that's a positive. Heading down to the EPS line, are we seeing growth in here? In fact, we, we haven't seen growth. Uh, we've seen contraction, if, if anything. So a little bit of a red flag there. But what's the growth going to be? I mean, the reason why I like to see growth throughout here is it's just a great track record through thick and thin, through pandemic, you know, boom and bust management, the business model has been able to prosper. Now, I can forgive uh, 2020 being worse than 2019 because there was a pandemic. Okay, so we, know, we need to be sensible and reasonable. Can I forgive 2022 being worse than 2020, 2021? Mm, maybe there was some inflation. I don't know, rates went up. But, it's, you know, that link on forgiveness is starting to become a little bit tenuous. But there is gr good growth in the system. I need to change this to the correct financial year because not all companies have a June 30 financial year. And that gives me my EPS uh, compound annual growth rate of 5%, which is below market, to be fair. And it's starting to drag down. I don't know enough about the company to say that. So I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and go low. Uh, is 14 a reasonable PE for that? It's not completely unreasonable, to be fair. Is it, a, is it at the high or low end of its five-year PE range? Uh, probably at the high end. Uh, and in terms of future piece, we don't have a lot because we don't have one in here. Uh, so yeah, look, I, I'm going to say uh, it is fair value. It is fair value. I don't think it's cheap, but I don't think it's crazy expensive either, okay, for what it's worth. Uh, let us head back now to the charts and do the next one. I'm going to try and get through as many today as possible. Okay, streamers from Toma. Am I able to look at ORI Orica? Absolutely, Toma, no worries. Let me zoom out again. It's important before I do my next batch of analysis to zoom back out so I get that big picture. I don't want to get caught up in the nitty gritty of the fine detail unless I've viewed my big picture first so I can get my trends. Okay, first place to start, what are the trends doing? Uh, so long-term trend actually starting to turn up now. That's good. That's, that's, a, that's a, a nice change from the indecision that we've had for such a long period of time. So it looks like, uh, and I always say that the uh, long-term trend ribbon, that's this one here, that's what the long-term investors are doing. Uh, are they still buying? Are they changing their mind and starting to sell? Okay. Uh, so they're coming back into the stock. That's a good sign. Short-term trend is very good. Now I can zoom in. Now I know where I'm headed. Um, also from that zoom out, I can get my uh, big points of supply. Okay. I'm not sure why in the past from my previous scratchings I drew one there. Uh, okay, because there is a little bit of demand there. So you can see this candle here is where the demand started. We often find that 
old points of demand can act as future points of supply. So let me label that for you. So an old POD can potentially act as a PO, POS in the future where people got in, okay, and then the price has gone beneath that point. They realize their mistake and they think, you know what? That's where I want to get out again. That's my break even point, okay? The people that bought in here, they've been waiting a long time to get back to break even. So not all of them, but some of them might want to sell there. So we just need to be a little bit cautious about that. And then this is the clear one. I mean, this is the this is not just a, a POS. This is an MPOS, isn't it? So uh, that one we need to take very seriously. So for uh, for Toma, there's some good stuff going on here. If I was to draw in the peaks and troughs, the recent ones, let's check the price action. Uh, we see good price action or not so good price action. A uh, little bit of an aberration here, probably reported there. I'm not going to actually draw that one. I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to say that the price action's pretty good. And the reason why I say it's pretty good is because we want to see price action that looks like this. This is the good stuff, all right? So where we're finding the last trough is at or above the second from last peak, okay? The last troughs of T0, which equals a point of demand, that point of demand, the demand is coming in above the previous uh, second from last, I should say. So that'll going to be peak two, uh, which equals a uh, previous POS. Okay. Uh, this is obviously, well, you get what I'm saying. Peak one, peak two. I could have made that T1, couldn't I? To make, to make that T2. Anyway, you get the picture. Uh, so this is this is what we call not just good. This is, to be fair, this is great, great price action. Okay. That's uh, big ticks on that one. Uh, what we don't want to see is the overlap. That's indecision. That's the markets not being so certain. Okay, you can see how the trend changes through there. So happy on the price action. Candles are fine. And so you might go, oh, okay, tick, 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 time to buy. And I say, no, not time to buy. I'm not interested in buying this one. And the reason for that is uh, we're just too close to the points of supply. So this one fails on a reward to risk basis. And that's where a lot of your trades are going to fail. I get ticks on trends, on price action, on candles, and then I look up. And I go, you know what, what is the point of buying something here, right, with maybe that's the upside or maybe that's the upside. And if I'm going to set a stop loss, I mean, you need to, I mean, even if you don't set stop losses, you still need to understand where you'd get out. Are you going to hold this forever? You know, is it down here? I don't know. Is it here? I'm just struggling to make it work on a reward risk basis. But otherwise, if you've got it, I can certainly say happy to hold it. Uh, let us head over here and uh, check out Orica on the company valuation side of things. I'm expecting we're going to have quite a few brokers covering this one. Uh, I need to go change this to September now because it is a September year end. In fact, we do have plenty of brokers covering Orica, 13 of them. Their highest price target is 18.50. Okay, compares pretty well to the current 16.14. And then we've got 14.55. That's yesterday's uh, close, by the way, just the way it works. Uh, as the low, 14.55, and then the average is uh, 16.37, which is saying that we're about fair value. Because, isn't it interesting? So all the consensus of these 13 brokers are saying it's about fair value. We had a chart that's, you know, sort of coming up to uh, fair value, you know, those old, old, old points of supply. Okay, earnings line, great growth. A mm. uh, little bit of a dip there through, let's say, COVID. Uh, but bouncing back and then coming back pretty well to give us actually some really good growth. You know, it's probably close to double the market. Uh, would I then be prepared to pay 16 times for a company that's growing at 15% per annum? Yeah, I would because the average market P is about 15. And average market growth is about 7 or 8%. So this is well above market growth. So I'd be, I'd be happy to pay just a little bit more than the market PE. I can't see any reason to doubt that. Let me just check the PE historical range. Look, it's been it's been much higher. I mean, in fact, at 16.1, we're beneath the bottom of the five-year range. So it's a pretty high hurdle rate. Obviously, the lower the PE, the higher your hurdle rate that you're applying to the company with your target PE. I can't see any reason to doubt this. Okay, I think it looks pretty well valued here, Orica, and the brokers are saying at least fair value. So what we're looking for here in our company valuation are red flags. Okay, we're not looking for something to say, oh, uh, the, the 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 correct valuation for Orica is seventeen dollars and fourteen cents. That is absolute stupidity. Anybody who tells me that the exact value for any company is X 
dot dot x dot dot i think it's just absurd how the hell do you know you know what's going to happen to, with such accuracy nostradamus that that's what you can say it's just silly and that's why i don't crunch the numbers myself i'd use the consensus these guys let them crunch the numbers and let, let us play let us play off their numbers. But even then, let us not get so caught up to think that you can put a one cent value, you know, to the one cent value on something and just say, look, roughly, there's no there's no red flags here. So if there's no red flags here, then when I look over here, there's nothing that should prevent me from buying the stock. Okay. I think that's the most sensible way to do fundamental analysis or to mix the two together. Okay, let us go to John, who's got JLG, uh, which is John's Ling Group. Mm, I think we have we've had a bit of a checkered uh, history with this one, haven't we, John? We've I think we've gone anywhere from buying when it was sort of in this phase <laughs> to lightening the load through this phase to compulsory exit, don't ask questions, all out. I don't know. I think maybe if it gets beneath here, perhaps um, <laughs> it kind of did, to be honest um tough one it's not one i'd be looking to buy and you know why uh, the long-term trend is not up yet it's still down the short-term trend is getting better but it's hardly what you say convincing uh clearly earnings were better than expected i'm guessing that's line that's that um candle there not totally convincing on the day bit of a shadow and then we're trading within the range it's 50 50. it really is i mean i think this is the epitome isn't it of something that is just really stuck in a range at the moment um there's you know a range there there's a range there i just i just it's just it's just hard for me to get really excited about this one um where could i get excited about it what could happen well you'd want to see the almighty most wonderful wonderful demand side candles coming in there the demand buddies to show that that short-term downtrend which has been pretty solid at resisting upside um, price movement is now providing support. We then would want to uh, best this level here. And again, see it push above, pull back, hold it, show that it is also offering support. Again, candles, price action, and then you could entertain it. And even then I'm probably gonna go not interested because we've got supply here and we've got supply here, okay? Which is gonna limit your reward risk because ultimately, we're still in a big trading range. Um, so buys off the table for me at this stage. I've told you what I would need to see to get there. Uh, can I hold it? Yeah, look, I think there's enough in it to hold it just on the basis that the price action is actually pretty good. Here's your price action through here. So we're okay for now. If it starts to um, get beneath the short-term uh, trend ribbon and beneath that peak, then it, it's starting to look very sketchy. Uh, so I don't think it's a sell. I could just get to a hold and there's so much more that needs to happen unfortunately, before I get to a buy. I'm not going to look at the fundamentals for that because um, there's there's nothing in the chart to suggest we need to bother looking at the fundamentals. And again, little tips I hope you're picking up. If you can't find a reason to buy at the chart, why are you looking at the fundamentals? Well, what's the point of that? <laughs> you, you, I mean, if you go to the fundamentals and find that it's 5 million percent undervalued and they get back to here and you go, well, nobody likes it, um, maybe there's something wrong with the valuation. Okay, because if it was undervalued, people would be buying it. So why, 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 why should we bother looking at the valuation of this one um, when the chart isn't any good? AIS, ah! All right, copper, copper stock. <laughs> we looked at, uh, I don't uh, don't normally do this in these sessions because I want to limit the, the, the talk about uh, commodities to the Thursday session, uh, which you can register for the same way you registered for this one. And we know that copper's obviously pulled back so I'm just trying to maybe explain for people who who are holding some of these copper companies like AIS what went wrong there. So it was looking fine, wasn't it? And, and we were riding this and we were watching the copper price doing the right thing. And then a couple of days ago, I, go, I said, look, watch out for copper. Uh, and this is um, the result of that. And to be fair, it's, it's a couple of days ago I said it. On Friday, in fact, uh, if you watched me on Osbiz, I said it. And you had prior warning even yesterday to take some action on this one, I feel. And I know that sounds really harsh, doesn't it? It's like, hey, you should have done this. But I feel you should have done this. I do. Um, so looking at the price action here, let's head here. Um, there's actually a little old peak on lower trough in there. And you can see how it was turning around. And then we say, 
in terms of managing your risk, right? If you close beneath the middle trough of the two points of supply. In fact, we had three here, right? So we go POS. Uh, I'll skip that one because that's yeah, that's an obvious one, POS. And it's definitely a POS because you see the, the candle started to look good off that short-term trend zone. So the buy came in, like the buy the dippers came in, but then they got whacked. And they got whacked really well. I mean, they got whacked convincingly in this candle. So what should we be doing when we see that candle is do not ask questions, do not pass go, minus uh, one third on that one. Uh, unfortunately, we've got another one and I can't see any reason not to do this. Now, this will depends. So let's go uh, here. Depends on candle close. Right. We don't know what that is. Exclamation mark. So if it closes, let's say here or worse, you know, certainly beneath 60, I can't see why you wouldn't just for safety exit another third. I know it's going to hurt. Um, hopefully you got in early. I mean, we started talking back about it back here. Now, this candle isn't closed. It could get better. We could see the buy the dippers from the long-term trend zone come in. Maybe they're there. Maybe they're just waiting until near the end of the day. They're going to come in, they're going to buy, and they're going to push this up, and they're going to turn this candle into one of the demand side buddies. Maybe. I don't know yet because I can't see the future. Okay. If you tuned in because you thought, I can see the future, you, you might as well tune out. You're going to be very disappointed. If, if that candle there, that candle there turns into that, we're okay. You don't need to do the minus one third. Okay. You can see how you go. But because this has shifted, let's face it, right? The balance between supply and demand has shifted here. Yeah, come on. You have to be really belligerent not to agree with that. Really now it's just about managing exits, isn't it? It's just about figuring out where you're going to get out, uh, waiting for the next reason to get out. It's just saying, well, come on, give me another reason to get out. And if it doesn't give you the reasons, you don't have to, right? But if it does, then you do. Disappointing, I know, John, but I think um, I think instructive. I know that people hate that, isn't it? Did you did you learn any? <laughs> you just lost a bunch. Of, I know the feeling. I've been there before. Um, I've been told this, and I know. Um, yeah, uh, C C. I can't remember what his last name was, but I'll give you his initial. I'm pretty sure it was CW. Yes, it was CW. Um, I shouldn't reveal too much. He's uh, my old futures broker. I would have been in my 20s. I would have been in my 20s uh, trading spy futures, mind you, because what else are you going to do in your 20s? Um, and after a run of bad trades, so I think I did maybe five or six trades, but not making more than a pip on the winners and probably losing a few pips, six pips on the losers, but just an afternoon of stupidity. Uh, probably ended up losing, you know, a thousand bucks on the afternoon. And uh, CW said to me, so Carl, did you learn anything? I just remember thinking, you bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> right, how dare, how dare you tell me? Um, no, I didn't learn anything from that because I kept making those mistakes. It was uh, many, many years after. But sometimes, yeah, it, sometimes you need to hear that stuff. Uh, did you learn anything, Carl? If, uh, where are we going now? Let's head back to the streamers. Sometimes it's a slow process. Uh, no Vonix. Let's go to Josh NVX. Um, forgive me, Josh. If I don't spend a lot of time on this one. People keep asking me about Novonix in these sessions, and it's okay. Keep keep doing that. But I think you know what I'm going to say, right? There's there shouldn't be any surprises here. I'm going to say, hey, <laughs> seriously, there's, there's going to be a time to buy it, right? Between now and the end of time. I do feel there will be a time to buy Novonix. I just don't know when that time's going to be. But what I can say with absolute certainty, it will have to look better than that for it to occur. And I'm happy to give up 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars to get what I want in Novonix, which is something like this, which is actually even further because it still needs to deal with this thing. Like this is the elephant in the room, is it not? Like how can you possibly want to uh, even contemplate buying Novonix? when that thing is just so powerful and we have to wait. We just got to wait. 
we have to wait it out until this starts to do this. And then when it starts to do this, yeah, then it's happy days, right? But until then, and then look, amber, 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 flashing, 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 warning signals. Um, yeah, enough said. Let us keep moving. But, you know, keep asking me these because we've always got new people coming in that haven't heard that spiel before and they really should. Uh, Alan. Ah, uh, Alan. I love the dreamers. I love the dreamers. I love the people, God bless them, that live in hope. You know, we need those people in the world, everybody. You know, the dreamers. Uh, ditto for you, Alan. Let's keep going. Let's get back to Jay. Can I look at uh, VS and GTI? I don't know what they are. I can, I can try GTI. If it's, what's VS? VS uh, maybe you're talking about US stocks there, Jay. And we do those on Friday. Thanks for reminding me, Jay, that we do US stocks on Friday. Um, there's a link where you registered for this one. Or if, uh, Jay's a streamer, so head to uh, the Think Markets webinars page and register for that. But uh, let's head to Rahman. Rahman's got GLN, uh, which is not looking fantastic. Let's face it. Uh, a little bit of a ditto from the last two. Uh, Long-term trend. Why would you want to buy it when the market can't decide? When You can see in the long-term market doesn't like it. Short-term trend is down. There's nothing in the price action to suggest to me this sort of thing where we are seeing, right, when you have a pod here and a pod here, what does it tell you about demand? What does it tell you about demand? Is demand increasing? Is demand diminishing? I'm going to put to you that when you see that, that means increasing demand. Why is demand increasing? Because it's a good stock, right? Forget the Refinitiv Icon spreadsheet. It's good. That's why there's increasing demand. Okay. The other thing is um, the supply. Here's your point of supply. Here's your point of supply. The supply is running away. Okay. There are fewer people wanting to sell, and that's that's interesting in itself. Think about that. There are few people wanting fewer people wanting to sell, but there are few fewer people wanting to sell at what price? This is where your your, your brain should just explode, right? This should be the, the just the ah, I get it. This is the reason why I listen to this idiot every Tuesday. Just ramble on and on about pretty much nothing. The only way you can get this price action is if there is actually less supply facilitating the demand to push prices higher, right? There is less supply as price, which is on this axis, right, is going up. Now, normally, Economics 101 suggests that when price goes up, supply should increase, okay? That's if I'm buying uh, a banana, right, or a pineapple, right? If the price goes up, people who grow pineapples will say it's more economical to do so, and they will grow more pineapples, and they will sell more pineapples, okay? What we've got here is a stock going up and people are supplying less of it, even though the stock is going up. How good is that? I mean, you cannot get any better. Price is going up and yet people want to supply less. Why? Because the fundamentals are getting better and better and better. Now, Economics 101 suggests that when the price of pineapples goes up, we buy fewer pineapples, right? Pineapples were $2 last week. Pineapples are $6 this week. Well, I'm not going to buy a pineapple. I'm going to substitute it for something else. I don't know, maybe a mango right? This is what we talk about here in life market analysis. Think about this. The price of this stock has gone up and yet people are buying more of it. They're demanding more of it. What does that tell you? Is the stock cheap? Is the stock expensive? Come on, this should be clicking for you here. Um, we're not seeing this. We're seeing the price come down. Are people buying? Hey, pineapples were six bucks. Now they're two bucks. Now they're 50 cents. I want to buy more pineapples. I'm going to make pina coladas. The price is coming down and yet we're not seeing a great deal of supply in here. Okay, um, sorry, a great deal of demand in here. People aren't shouting that's a bargain. I know we're, this is a long-winded explanation for why I have no interest in buying gallon lithium, but hopefully it gives you the ability to go through stock by stock in your portfolio. Doesn't look like buildings demand and diminishing supply to me. No, I need to work some exits on that one. Uh, look, actually not bad here. I can definitely see some building demand here and uh, supply appears to be diminishing. Going to keep that one. Don't need to do anything with that. Now this one, no, no, you know, 
that's what this is about. That's what we do. That's what we do here. Uh, sorry, Ramon, I've no interest in um, purchasing Gallon at this point in time. Would I hold it? I can't see any reason to hold it either. Sounds harsh, doesn't it? Okay, Karun, let's go to an energy stock. I think last time we spoke about this, James, I said I was losing patience in it. I said, uh, if it, uh, maybe I said even here, if it closes beneath this pod to exit a third, look, it has it, luckily for me. Uh, I'm becoming a bit more patient with it because we've got some white candles, the price action improving and the long-term trend's okay. So um, I can't remember exactly what I said last time, but it hasn't, it looks like it had the worst case scenario, hasn't precipitated. So let us say, uh, with that trend intact, happy to go a hold. Can you buy it here? Um, look, I think if you'd love pain, if you love anguish, um, if you often partake in banging your head against a brick wall, if all of these things sound appealing to you, then I, I recommend, and I can't recommend because ASICS get, gets upset with me when I recommend stuff, but I can recommend that you buy this if you like pain. Okay, not it's got nothing to do with your financial situation, but if you like pain, then buy Karoon. Uh, let us go here and check out what's happening on the Karoon valuation. I'm interested. I'm curious. Uh, it's a stock I've liked many times in the past, but has never really got its you know what together. Okay, so let us check it out. Uh, let us go to oh, we're still retrieving, so we're waiting for it to catch up. Uh, let us go to June 30 on the year end. Uh, we've got eight brokers covering 360 high target there, 233 low with an average of 298, which is allowing 30% upside. Hmm, that's interesting. One strong buy, six buys, one hold. No sells, no strong sells. That's good too. EPS, we know it's uh, only in the last couple of years it's starting to make a profit uh, and the profit is getting better and better until we sort of tail off. Now, the reason why we're seeing the tail off here is really brokers, they're they tend to be really conservative with their long-term forecast for commodity prices. And they're saying, well, you know, all price will probably come down in the long run. So I don't think this is necessarily uh, an operational deficiency for Karoon. I think that is more the big brokers in their infinite wisdom saying, well, energy prices will be weaker down the track. But it is what it is. And we're looking at minus 23% uh, compound annual growth rate. Now, what the market will do, and you can see it straight away, what the market does when it sees that earnings contraction, it doesn't necessarily say, well, the stock's worthless, and it doesn't necessarily say that the stock is expensive or the stock can't go up, okay? What it does say is that it says that the PE needs to be very, very low to justify me taking that leap of faith, okay? And that's what, look at that, we've got a PE of four, okay? Um, is that about the right PE? Well, it's hard to tell because we don't have a lot of history to measure against. It's not like it's Woodside. Uh, going forwards, again, you know, four, five, probably, I don't know, probably, mate, let's probably a bit low. Maybe you could go a bit higher. Yeah, look, I'm not going to be able to give you a really sensible number here because it's a little bit obscure, to be honest, um, when you've got that and then you've got that uh, and then you've got so little history. I don't even I don't even want to muck around with it. I, I was going to put like a six in there, sort of split the difference. See that? Um, let it, let's 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 change this. Let's let's take the, the the median of everything we've got, and that's why I was saying about six. So actually six point seven. But it doesn't it doesn't change this enough um, to to make it make sense with that. So I'm going to say, Karun's broken my spreadsheet. Okay. So defer to the brokers. That's okay. Doesn't doesn't mean the spreadsheet's completely useless. It just means no reason that I can see to to not agree with what these eight big brokers are saying. UBS, Deutsche Bank, uh, Credit Suisse, all those characters. Let us go back to here and let us do uh, for Ben LAU, which is the next one. You, there we go. Oh, that looks interesting. Lindsay Australia. Now, oh, there you go. That's what is super, super fascinating here is the last time we looked at this, it was on the ropes, wasn't it? And this is, if anything, just highlighting how this methodology works, where we're saying we've got an impasse, we've got a pass, we've seen it today. And we use this methodology where if you if you trade, not, oh, geez, I nearly said it. If you close beneath um, the middle trough, which is your pod, uh, you would uh, minus a third, right? Which is what we would have said last time. And look at that, lo and behold, it tested it twice. It tested it twice. And this is an area of demand. That's fine. That's good news, okay? This is this is good for us. So look at that through there. We are seeing the demand come in, 
uh, and it's all it's all good. It didn't close beneath there. It's okay if it trades beneath there. We don't want to see it close beneath there because who's to say that the, the buyers are going to act immediately as soon as you get there. Um, so this is all good. No reason to exit. Happy to hold. Uh, would I buy here? I can't see any reason why you wouldn't buy. It's a little bit of a ways away from that, but I don't think spectacularly so. And the candles are amazing. And the price action, now that it's closed above that MPOS, uh, is very good. So happy hold on this. Could I add some risk? Yes, I can. So let me officially go plus one third on that one. Uh, no, no issues at all. Um, let us, just out of um, just sheer curiosity, I don't think we're going to have many brokers on this one, uh, but we can see for you, Ben. It might make you feel better if, if they've got a good rating on it. So let me go back to the F because that's my preferred setting. And I'm not going to do much but say that uh, the brokers are saying there's still a bit of upside in this one. Okay. Uh, and I don't think that's a terrible hurdle for that growth rate either. So there's no reason for me to change that at this stage. Uh, EPS growth looks excellent. PE range is extremely low. So I have no reason to doubt this. If anything, it's looking a bit cheap to me. Okay, so happy holder there for you, Ben. Uh, let us head to Hanelli. Hanelli is asking about SHL. Any change on SHL this week? Oh, oh okay. Very interesting. Look, it was one of the really interesting ones from last week where it was trying to change the trend. Uh, we looked at Novonics, barely a pulse. We looked at zero, oh, half a pulse, but still long-term trend is dominant. And then we look at Sonic, okay, with that big long-term trend, but we are challenging it. We are trying to get rid of the supply, okay? Up here, ladies and gentlemen, there exists a huge pile of supply. It, is, it has been working the market for so long. The only right way to get rid of this supply Okay, you have to trade with them. You have to trade with them. They've got shares, right? Must trade with them to get rid of them. The only way you can trade with them is if there is enough cash. Okay, that's what cash demand. Demand is just cash, everyone. It's hard earned cash, right? You need to take money, give it to those people with shares and get them out of the supply side. And once they're gone, there's actually less supply, which can facilitate the rally. Um, has the situation changed from last week? And early, I, I don't think it has much. Ditto. We need to see the price actually come in. We need to see the demand buddies in the green zone. And you know, I'm happy to look at it over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, if I said last week, probably said hold, happy to hold at this stage. Not a buy yet. That buy would be contingent on price action and candles. So uh, ditto for this week. Let us head to some of the streamers. MRM for an anonymous. We did that at the start, so I'll refer you to the recording, which is published to YouTube. Uh, let us do for Andrew Weebit, which is under a little bit of pressure. It was this morning. Let me get the latest update update for you, Andrew. Uh, so the data provider I use gives me snapshots each hour, and we're waiting for one of those to come through because we'll get the um, your time one o'clock candle. Might update, might not update, because it just simply hasn't been a change. Doesn't look like it. Uh, 7.50 is not a round number for me. I wouldn't bother with it. Eight I might look at. Tends to be that last sort of uh, bastion of uh, round number supply before 10, but we're not there. I can't see any reason to exit right now, Andrew, if, you, if you're holding, which you probably are happy to be a holder. Um, we said plus one three. You could, uh, one third here we said adding back in so you can see here what i like it's pretty clear what i like is when we get back to that green zone you've seen me draw the arrows before with the nice candles and these are the perfect demand side buddies look at these like perfect setup 10 out of 10 setup here magic in this trend in this trend 10 out of 10 right here so if you want a case study for what i like that's it snapshot that candle there so literally just go back snapshot it stick it on your wall and if you only ever traded that, you'll do very well. If you were, if you literally were patient, we're not patient enough to only ever wait for those. But if you were, you'd do very well. And no reason to sell it. This candle is not great, let's face it, but it's not finished yet. And we are seeing the signs of demand coming back in here. Uh, now, Andrew, having said that, if we end up with the supply side candle, oh, I don't need to draw it because it's right there. 
that's good, saves me some time. So if I see the supply side candles, which, yeah, which are there, there we go. Uh, so let me move this arrowhead and put it up here. Very simple, very easy analysis on Webit Nano. If we see the supply side candles coming in today or the next few days, then you can start to exit. But until then, there's nothing to do on this one. And look at that, it's vertical, isn't it? It's going vertical and somebody's telling you that, no, no, I'm happy to hold on to it. Compare and contrast what I just said to every other talking head you've heard on TV. Oh, this has gone up a lot. Yeah, you should take some profits. It's just like a knee-jerk response. Um, well, if the candles don't tell you to get out, why would you get out? Okay, let us go to the next one for Barry, which is ASO. Oh, yeah, very interesting. Aston, Aston Minerals. Uh, I like it, Barry. Lots of stuff to like here. That's good. Uh, the long-term trend, you can see how it's transitioning, changing, changing, changing. We're above it. We've, we've moved into it. We've tested it. We've held it. We're coming out of it with some nice candles. So good volume. Interest is up. Short-term trend is good. Hey, is this a 10 out of 10? No, it's not a wee bit nano at that six buck amazing uptrend. This is a different type of setup. So if I go back, I've got two setups. Keep it simple, right? This is your, what do you call it? In trend, uh, my motive, it's moving. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, I always call it sort of setup number one. There's a beautiful trend in place. And then I look at something uh, like this one, where I say it's more of a turnaround play. That's what I call it. Um, uh, sort of a transition, transition. We're transitioning, aren't we, from a long-term downtrend to long-term uptrend. You might, I might call it setup two. Okay, two types of setups. Equally valid. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put more risk on one than the other because I add risk um, a bit at a time. Okay, but I understand that when I'm trading these. These are, there's greater risk. It's, 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 just, it's, it's just more risk in these ones than the other ones, okay? Uh, and you have a mix, have a mix of setups because who's to say that the ones that are bottom left, top right are always going to do well? Because what you often find is that, and it's not the case for wee bit, but you might find there's a certain set of conditions in the macro, so the, in the economics that are causing this to happen, which have impeded in the past these charts here, right? And if that macro flips, the thing that was amazing for that macro is probably going to be hurt while what is turning around is going to be helped. Okay, so that's why we have a mix of setups. We don't, we're not biased to say, well, we should only have setup ones because they're lower risk. We have a bit of a mix because having, because that's diversification, is it's diversification setups actually lowers your risk, even though these are riskier setups, which kind of, kind of I know it doesn't make sense, but have a think about it, it should. What, what we need here, uh, for you, Barry, it's just simply a good close, okay? And if, it, if we do get a good close, you know how I do my weekly, I'll do one today, I'll find the time. I just haven't been able to find the time lately, ladies and gentlemen, but I'll do one of my, my weekly, um, not weekly, my daily shortlist on Twitter. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's one I would put in on that shortlist if it has a nice strong close today. And we can see that the high of the session is around 11 and a half. So we'd want to see it close at least 11, but preferably 11 and a half or better on that one. Uh, and then I could happily go, happily, Barry, go uh, plus one third on that one okay i won't do the fundamentals for aso because i'm guessing little mining company not going to have any it won't have any broker coverage so let's keep mo moving uh tlg which is Tauga group oh that was starting to look good wasn't it that's a shame uh right there that is looking fantastic so that candle there i can't fault it it looks amazing and this is the frustration of being a trader and this is why you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you don't put a huge amount you know if you get too excited on things and go the whole hog and say, that's the best chart I've ever seen, put it all on that. And then it's just one of those ones that doesn't work out. You know, uh, I think we've got some problems here now, don't we? Barry, unfortunately, that's oh, another one for Barry. Uh, we're, we're in manage, manager exit sort of stuff here because uh, we've got the, P, the POS. Uh, this is now formed as a POS, right? Even though it's a big demand candle. Uh, and then this is your second POS and it's lower. And this, this is your trough that's beneath them, which is POD. And this is not a nice candle at all today. So the trend is changing. So I think we need to seriously think about managing our exits. Now, we, if this candle somehow miraculously turns into a, a, a big um, lower shadow and demand side candle, you're okay, you're fine. You don't have to do anything. But if it stays down here, you might want to just start to take some, some risk off the table. It's a shame. 
I, there must have been something fundamental in here. You, I know you follow it closer than I do, right? Uh, but yeah, we have to respect the fact that the market is beginning to change its mind on that one. Okay, so managing the risk would be the better thing to do, I think, on that. Uh, Barry, I won't do your third one, okay, because we've had to try and get on to some of the other ones. Uh, Alan, I know you had a, uh, actually for SIQ, do you look further back to the POS in December? Okay, it's more of an educational one, so we will uh, do this one. So we head to SIQ and just, uh, the question is, so it's a question asked before, if you've just tuned in. Uh, for SIQ, do you look further back to the point of supply in December around 2022? So I'm guessing it's uh, December 2022, point of. Well, I can't see any points of supply in December 2022, but I can see one back here. And if the question is, am I worried about that? I'm not worried about that yet. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Apart from that, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Maybe there's a typo there, Alan. Uh, let's go to H Fernando. Uh, H, I typed in H, let's go to AVH, nearly there. Oh, oh, amazing. How good's this? Uh, hopefully you're doing well on it. H, I really do. There's no reason to sell it. Oh, I was going to nearly misspoke there. There is a reason to sell it today. Four bucks, I'd knock out a third. Uh, four is one of my round numbers, so it's five. Uh, and I'm just going to go, just, just going to go here third and, and please... I can't tell you what to do because that's uh, against the rules. So let me say, um, in my opinion, uh, what I would do is uh, minus the third. I know it sounds a bit harsh and a bit crazy, even though that candle's amazing, but that's just what I do. And I have to be consistent in what I do. Okay, so I'm going to go minus a third on the basis of the round number only. And then uh, I'm still plus two thirds. And there's no reason based upon the candles to do anything but hold that one. Uh, so for the people maybe that haven't been listening to me for a very long time, this is one where you can see the arrows are that we were looking for a turnaround play. Now, what we should do, because I showed you the 10 out of 10 case study for a uh, an in-trend setup, I should show you the 10 out of 10 case study for a turnaround play, okay, which is that. Uh, in fact, we might have even looked at it, the candle before, which is that, okay? So we've got that long-term downtrend, and this is what Zero will have to do. Uh, this is what uh, Novonix will have to do, okay? We need to interact with this zone, okay? We need to change its color. We need to get above it. We need to show that it's actually supporting price supporting price the trend uh, needs to turn up uh, we need to you know just break through the top of that or come back and hold it i mean there are other, other opportunities through here um, to get in uh, and really and on any of those even the pullback to the there you go there's another little pullback there with the right candles um, probably not here i can't say that was one there because those candles are probably not good enough um, but well done i'm i'm genuinely genuinely ecstatic for you so uh, the question is can i ask your opinion uh, i'm hoping because you've got it i'm hoping you're not asking I, I can't see why you would ask me um to buy it here obviously because it's miles away so i'm guessing you had it because i know it's one we've talked about for many uh many many sessions okay from anonymous srg uh looks fine no complaints i don't think there's anything so sinister there to get out looks a bit like mrm doesn't it anonymous uh happy to hold it would i buy it D the next decent candle you know, the next decent demand buddy, yeah, happy to add a third. But again, understand the nature of the beast. Look how sketchy that is. Again, like MRM, it's illiquid, it's grinding, okay? It's going to grind higher. So if that's the best thing you can find right now, maybe you've struck up an affinity with the fundamentals, good for you. I don't mind it from a technical perspective. From Brett, hi Carl, how do you handle a capital raise following a trading halt in your chart? Let's have a look at Silex. Uh, capital raise, generally, you're going to see a drop in... There you go. Uh, next words out of my mouth, capital raise. Generally, you're going to see a drop in price, okay? Because when the stock goes up, a company that is running out of money, even if they're not completely running out of money, but they know that they will run out of money before they can finally turn a profit, which is very much Silex and has been Silex for about uh, 15 to 20 years, they will want to raise some capital, okay? And this is why we do stuff like this, Brett, where we don't ask questions. We don't pass go. We just do stuff that seems crazy to people, like just getting the hell getting some out at five bucks for no other reason, but it's five bucks, okay? Um, what do you do? No, it's still a, still a supply demand event for me. It's the same as if there was a, um, like a company report. It's not the same as a dividend, okay? So that's important. It's not the same as a dividend. So I still think it's a supply event. I think basically we've created a bunch of dead wood. So what this does, this, this is actually the right answer to your question. Think of all the people, Think we've put the market on the wrong side, okay? 
Uh, and you can see through here, maybe there was a minus one third exit there, there was an add back in here, whatever, right? Holding two thirds, uh, sold a third here, holding two thirds, whatever, that's history. Let's get rid of this because I want to talk about this. What, what you've done, Brett, is because of this and how good it looked prior to that announcement, um, people were definitely skewed to the long side, right? When we're down here, uh, they look up, right? Uh, so you can imagine uh, you're in here uh, and you are uh, looking up, looking up at the price, right? And how do you feel, Brett? How do you feel? There you are. That's you, Brett. Uh, you're looking up at the price. And what are you thinking? What's Brett thinking here, everybody? Uh, it's Brett thinking, you know what? It's still a ripper stock. It's still the best stock ever. I'm going to hang on. Or is Brett thinking, oh, I knew I should have gone out there. Oh, what? Oh, I knew that was the top. I, thought, I was so tempted. I had my finger on the sell button. And I didn't sell it. Well, if it ever gets back up there again, I'm out. Not this little black duck. That's not going to happen to me again. Unfortunately, what it creates is a whole heap, not just a little bit. You know, points of supply, they're latent supply, right? They're, they're there because people regret getting out. But here, because people are so skewed to the long side, whole heap of latent. Not latent as in, come on, latent supply, right? And it, it's, for me, it's now just in the too hard basket. So, yeah, the, the two candles here are fine. I totally expect you might even get a little bit of a rally by the dip, still great, long-term story before whatever placement people, the, the people that came into the um, shareholder registry are wonderful, whatever, and you maybe get a rally. But I'd be really watching this like a hawk for any signs of supply coming around to that short-term uh, trend ribbon to manage my exits on this one. It's frustrating. I know, I feel your pain. It's happened to me... Uh, not dozens, probably more than dozens of times over you know 30 years of investing. Uh, and it tends to happen when your stock looked the best as well, right? This is what we do in Australia. Stock looks good, raise some, raise some money at a massive discount. Thanks, management. But anyway, maybe management was good to push the price up in the first place, in the first place so we shouldn't complain. Uh, what have we got here? NMT, Neo Metals for Ramad NMT. Oh, that's an interesting candle. Uh, but, but still too early for me. I mean, that's that's great. We've got some demand in the system. Uh, it did, not a lot of volume coming through, though, Roman. I would prefer, I mean, it's we're still trading today. I'd like to see more volume. There's still so much that needs to do. Roman, I get the feeling you're an investor who holds stuff all the way down. Like, you're, you're, not, you're not in stocks, Roman, for a good time. You're in stocks for a long time, Roman, from your two picks. I get that feeling. I I get the feeling, Roman, that you struggle to get out of losing trades. And I'm not trying to make fun here. I'm not trying to be harsh. But we need to change that, okay? Keep listening to me. Keep tuning in. And hopefully, I'll wear you down, okay? And I'll make you, I'll force you to be more, pro more proactive, um, to prevent your life from being the pursuit of pain and agony, and to start to be the pursuit of uh, happiness and optimism. Uh, I can go hold on this one on that last candle hopefully it stays there by the end of the day but you know from everything i've said today Roman, i'm not going to get to a buy on this one that's impossible uh we're getting pretty close to time so stop typing in any new ones i can see where the bottom is uh for both the uh, sessions and uh, philip you've just snuck in with cuv which i'll do now uh, so let's head over here and i did see was that down today cuv oh my god uh okay well i'm, I'm glad I'm glad you brought it up because it looks like I can um, say, hey, I told you so. Because <laughs> Here we go. Species ending events. If you don't believe me about species ending events, thanks, Philip. There you go. You just proved my point. Don't muck around, right? And by muck around, I mean muck around with those candles. They are trend killers. Look how good this thing was before that candle. Don't muck around with them with a capital F. There's nothing in there to get you back in the stock. Maybe you weren't listening to me in the last few weeks that we looked at this, Phil, but um, yeah, it's dead meat from here. Uh, can you own it now because it's cheap? That's not my style. Um, buy, hold, sell. I can't, I, you know what? 
You should have asked me three weeks ago when I said sell. I'm sorry, mate. I've got nothing more for you on that one, really. Um, I take no no pleasure in your pain either. It's uh, it's, it's frustrating uh, when, when stuff like that ha happens. It's even more frustrating when you could have done something about it. Okay, let's go to Jimmy. Hi, Carl. What are your thoughts when a stock has gapped up and you're waiting for it to come back closer to your short and long-term trends? Um, it could also be a turning point of the stock on the way down. Oh, let me answer the first part of the question. It's not much. You just kind of have to wait there. Um, what's a good gap up? So we've got, say, MRM where it gapped up and you're waiting for it to pull back. Don't wait for it to pull back to here. And there's an old saying in technical analysis that gaps have to be filled. That's rubbish. It's not true. They don't have to be filled. Look, there you go. There's one example where it doesn't. But often they will pull back and then just watch, Jimmy, for the short-term trend zone. Just be patient uh, and wait for the candles when you get there. Sometimes they won't get there and they'll push up. That doesn't mean you can't buy them when they're higher. Just look for good signals. Look for good trends. Look for good candles. Look for good price action. Um, you, you know, if they get back to here, it's a bonus. But hey, if they don't, then that's a good sign. If they don't pull back, that's even better when you think about it. Uh, from Kimberly, can I have a look at Low Visa? Yeah, sure can. Let us go to the uh, Zoom all. Uh, what do we say? Manage your exit. Mm, that was a while ago. It did come back and it's gone up. It's been pretty sketchy. Uh, look, I think you need to be a little bit careful about this one, uh, Kimberly. It has been a market darling. I do see some supply coming in. That, that for me is really now looking like an MPOS. Uh, this is looking like a POS and one is lower than the other. So I can say with confidence uh, that if we if we close beneath, not a tickle, but a close beneath that pod, uh, then 100% we could be could be, should be, uh, minus one third beneath there. That's to, that goes without saying. Um, is there anything more sinister to act now? Look, I tell you what, I really don't like this cluster of blacks. When I see a cluster of black like that in an uptrend, it tells me that somebody has got to their price. Like you know, somebody bought, uh, how about this? <laughs> somebody bought this thing at literally half the price it is now, and they've gone, you know what, I don't care. I, honestly, I don't care if it's a good story. I don't care what the earnings are. I've just doubled my money. And I'm a fund manager and I want to report a nice profit uh, on my P&L come year end. It just smacks of that when I see those candles. Just even an uptrend, like candle, everything was great. And then all of a sudden you see like six of them in a row. You shouldn't see six of them in a row. Something is up. And lo and behold, um, <laughs> you know, if you bought it at 13, at 26, you kind of double your money and you don't care what you're selling at. And because that's what those candles represent. You might say, okay, why are those candles so bad, Carl? They represent, I don't care what I'm getting. I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't care less what price I'm getting. I just want to get the hell out. Um, so for me, you know, I, I could even exit a third now, right? Just on the basis that I know I'm late, but I just don't like that. And then th that would be the second third. And then if we close beneath here, that's where your final third goes. And you've given Low Visa every chance to continue to be what has been, you know, a very good stock and a very good trend. Okay. So you're still in, you're not doing anything. You might want to flinch and do the one third. That's up to you. Um, but you're on alert, aren't you? And you've got a plan. That's half the battle, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Just having a plan for what to do. Most people, they're just hoping for the best. Um, so let's do uh, one, two, three. Uh, I've reckoned that one came in after the uh, <laughs> the the cutoff there. Um, let's keep going. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to super quick though. Okay, so no 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 fundamentals, just all technicals. Quick fire. NHF. I can go a hold on the basis that these uh, candles here are very strong from that dip. That's that's important. I can't buy it because uh, there's too much supply in here. I'd be banging my head against a brick wall. There's my upside. There's my downside potentially. Um, no reward to risk there. Happy holder, okay, not a buyer. Let us go to Santos, STO. Uh, this is looking more and more like a sell than anything else. I, I think your grip on holding is very tenuous, although if you followed my uh, system of analysis, you wouldn't be in this one anyway. You would not own Santos now. But if you do, I can't see any reason why you want to hold a full position here. I'd almost just straight out just anticipate the breakdown by just exiting a third here so that when uh, this breaks here, I'm probably just actually going to do not a third, but just the two thirds. So I'm going to just dump some now just in case, because if it goes back up, I'm still still holding two thirds, like because this is the bottom of the range. Let's face it, this is the bottom of the range, right? So maybe 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 it does go back up from here. Maybe it does bounce from here. What do I know uh, from here, right? And if it does bounce from here, you say, hey, Carl, why'd you tell me to get out third? Numbskull, you know, you knew it was going to bounce from there. No, I don't know if it's going to bounce from there. If anything, it, it looks like it's going down. Right, so I'm taking a precaution because I shouldn't have been in the stock in the first place. 
Uh, and therefore, if it gets beneath there, we're going to go the minus two thirds. Okay, that's how I view that. Of course, you do what you've got to do. Let's go to DRO. Uh, yeah, looks good, Peter. I like this one. Um, could I buy it? So hold is is 100%. 100% hold. Sell is out of the question. The um was, could I buy it? Yeah, I can't see why not. I'm a little bit concerned. There's a bit of supply here. It's pesky. They might come back and they might give me some hassles. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're going to give me some hassles. But is it convincing? Are we seeing what I have to grapple with here is how convincing is the demand so far? I think it's pretty good. And this is why we only do stuff like this. We don't have to go, you know, put every cent I have. But yeah, look, I'm going to go plus one third on the basis that everything else checks out and there's a good chance we can bust through that supply there. So I'm happy to add some risk on that one for you, Peter. Uh, let us go to PBH. Hoping to... Uh, Okay, here we go. Uh, this one's from Barry. Barry giving me case studies today because Barry uh, knows that I could never call that a buy. Uh, Barry knows that I must call that a sell uh, and hold it off the table. So if we're looking at this in percentages, uh, we've got 0% buy, 0% uh, hold, and 100% sell. That is my view of the world, okay? Uh, if you've got it, I apologize. I really do. Uh, but you've had plenty of reasons to get out. And we talked about these people who just pursue pain. They just want to be. They just want to have pain in their portfolios. And I don't get it. You don't have to be that person. Why are you that person? And I know you know as well. I know you know you need to change. So why not change? Uh, RFT got a roughie, says Carlo. It's, it's, it's a roughie, but unfortunately, this candle is the deal breaker for me today. In fact, you saw a little bit of it there. This it, in there, it smacks of it smacks of people just waiting to get out of this. They've been suffering for so long. As soon as it gets out, they just as soon as it goes up, they're just getting the hell out. I'm going to go pass on that. It's not the worst thing I've seen, but I just don't think it's going to pull enough demand together to overwhelm the supply that is so clearly intent on getting out as soon as it goes up. So pass on me on that one. Uh, we are getting close. ABH we've done from Tanya. I did do that one. If you missed it, go back into the recording. And then uh, we've done everything. Uh, actually, one more, one more. CGS. This is the last one, everybody. CGS. Oh, geez, we're getting a few of these today. Why are we getting so many of these big gaps? It's because we're in earnings season. Companies coming out with half yearly reports that are disappointing the market. I saw a tweet today. Maybe it was from David Scutt. Was it Scutty that tweeted it? Um, follow Scutty at S C U T T Y. Uh, and he showed a Morgan Stanley, he doesn't tweet his own stuff by the way, he just retweets other stuff. But he said that he showed a Morgan Stanley table that said that companies in this earnings season are being belted harder for negative reports than for many, many years. And that's what we're seeing here. Um, look, there's some encouragement in that is moving back up with some reasonable demand candles, although this candle is still live. I do feel, however, very strongly that they've got a bunch of investors that are probably just waiting to get out of this, and this is going to be a supply zone. So for me, if I started to see the, the supply side candles in here, I'm um, changing from a hold only because we're trying to get a better price. It's not hold because I think this is going to three bucks and this is the best stock. I think hold because you might get a better price to get out of this and manage your exit, but that's the only way I could do this. Uh, buy this one? No, absolutely. Buy is at 0%. Um, sell is when we get the right candles. Okay, and hold is uh, very conditional as well. Okay, I think we can adjourn there and head back to this one and say uh, for the streamers mainly uh, to head over to that address there, streamers, www.thinkmarkets.com forward slash au webinar, and you can um, get into this, the session and um, it's, you know, that's up to you. But I tend to answer those questions a little bit uh, more regularly. Uh, it's free to join, of course, and I'm, I do uh, the ASX one today. I'm going to do indices, commodities, forex, and crypto on Thursday. Super interesting session. Even if you are only going to ever trade stocks, definitely tune in for that one because it'll give you the macro. It'll help you understand the moves behind the moves on the, on the Aussie stock market. And then, if you're a stock trader, you really should tune in on Fridays at 12 p.m. Note the time difference, 12, not 1 on Friday, because I've got some other stuff to do at 1 p.m., uh, the USA edition, where we look at all of those USL, USA stocks. Fundamentals and technicals, similar format to what we saw today. Um, if you're not a client of Think Markets, well, you really should be, because we are the good guys in the Australian broking scene. If you'd like to trade with us, we've got $8 
flat rate commissions, HIN sponsors, sponsorship, your chair sponsorship, uh, perfect for your self-managed super funds, www.thinkmarkets.com.au. But if you want to trade uh, some of those other things, CFDs on foreign exchange, crypto, commodities, futures, the best spreads in the business, commission-free on shares, the best platforms. We keep winning awards. Uh, dedicated account manager. You don't have to look for how to contact finds, you know, go through pages and pages on our website on how to find us. We are there to support you. If you like what you saw today, hit the subscribe button to stay notified of any of my future updates that come out regularly during the week. And if you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up button to let me know you like what I'm doing. Very important. Uh, so let's think markets know that I need to keep doing it. Apart from that, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. All the best for your trading and investing to catch up again. But remember, everything we talked about today was general advice. It has not taken into account your personal financial circumstances or particular needs. So before acting upon any of that general advice, consider it carefully or seek the help of a financial professional. If you'd like to know more about us and our products, head to our website and download our product disclosure statement. Bye-bye, everyone.